In this video, I will take a look at how the Tiny SA handles the input from various signal generators and how you can be sure that you can trust what you see from the signal generator. And this because in some videos on the internet, uh, certain people have stated that the Tiny SA easily overloads. So we're going to check whether that's actually true and we see what we can do against it if overloading happens. To start with, I've taken a, a signal generator with a fairly clean signal at uh, 10 megahertz at the level of 20 dBm. And the Tiny SA is uh, in its default settings, so nothing changed after switch on, except that I've added two delta markers, markers at 20 and 30 megahertz, uh, so we can measure the level of the uh, harmonics if they appear. What you see here is that the measured level is at uh, minus 20, minus 19.5 dBm, which is okay. And the automatic attenuation is set to 5 or 6 dB. That implies that the level at the input of the mixer is minus 25 dBm maximum. And it's good to remember because this is an important number. So the first thing we're going to do is to increase the signal and to see whether the Tiny SA is capable to deal with stronger signals. Uh, because uh, some people say you should keep your input signal below th minus 30 dB. And we're going to see whether that's true. So we are going to increase the signal first to minus 10 dB. This is minus 10 dB. We see that the noise floor is going up and that's because the attenuator is now uh, on automatic at, mine, uh, at 15 or 16 dB, which makes sense uh, because the input level of the mixer is still at minus 25 dB. And we see that basically nothing changes. No harmonics appear, nothing's happening. So we're going to increase the input level further. And we're now at 0 dBm. So we have a 0 dBm signal into the tiny SA. Everything is in default settings. And we see that the input attenuator is uh, toggling between 25 and 26 dB uh, to keep the uh, level at the input of the mixer at minus 25 dB. And everything uh, looks OK. No harmonics appear. Nothing's going wrong. Uh, and the tiny as it is seems to be very capable to handle this uh, type of uh, input. As a next step, we're going to zoom in a bit to see whether there are any harmonics at all. And to do that, I'm going to change the uh, frequency span or decrease the speaker's frequency span to stop at um, 35 megahertz. So we'll just be able to see the second and the third harmonics. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to decrease the resolution bandwidth. Because with the decrease of the resolution bandwidth, the noise floor should move down and we can observe more dynamic range. It's important to look at the two delta markers. Delta marker two shows uh, approximately 60 or minus 60 dBc, which means that the noise is at minus 60 dBc. And we will see if we can make that go down if we change the resolution bandwidth. Resolution bandwidth is currently an automatic setting at about 250 kilohertz bandwidth. So we're going to change that to 100 kilohertz. And you see now that the noise floor dropped to minus 65 dB. And I still can't see any harmon harmonics. So I'm going to reduce it further, 30 kilohertz, 30 still no sign of harmonics, we are at minus 68 dBc, uh, the noise floor. Yeah. As the sweep time is above two, one second, you see here the scan time indicated, the green line at the bottom starts to appear. So that you can see how long the total sweep 
will take. Now we're going to reduce it one step further, 10 kilohertz. You see the sweeping again becomes slower. And we are now at a noise floor at minus 69 dB. Minus 70 dB and still no sign of harmonics. That implies that if you have very good signal generator and you leave everything in automatic except reducing the resolution bandwidth because you want to see a bigger dynamic range, then in all the automatic settings you, uh, you can see uh, harmonics that are at uh, or you have a dynamic range available of 70 dB. So any harmonics that is above the 70 dB, you can be sure that it is not internally generated, but it's coming from the signal generator. For this measurement, I've changed the signal generator to a different signal generator. That's a, a DDS, a home-built DDS signal generator. Uh, that promises a fairly clean signal um, and we can uh, of I didn't change any of the settings compared to the previous uh, measurement and the only thing I changed is the resolution bandwidth I set it back to automatic as you can see the the 10 megahertz signal is there at minus 1.9 dBm so we have the 24 dB attenuation and you see that the second and the third harmonic are there. They can now be observed. Uh, the second harmonic is at minus 45, uh, minus 44 dBc. And the third harmonic is, uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit jumping up and down. Uh, it's uh, approximately at minus, uh, minus 50 dB, uh, dBc. Let's now widen the measurement range and see if this signal generator indeed has a nice clean signal. And you see that um, different to the previous generator, this signal generator has not only the second and the third harmonic, but also sometimes some more harmonics and even a very strong signal um, around Yes, what is it? 50, 130 megahertz. So this is not such a good signal. But of course, for many purposes, uh, having your second harmonic at minus 50, uh, minus 45 dB is perfectly acceptable. So no, nothing to worry about. Good usable signal generator. The next generator that I will compare is a, a good old analog signal generator. All analog stuff with a maximum frequency of 12 megahertz. We switch the resolution bandwidth back to automatic is to have a good comparison and we set the stop frequency back to 35 megahertz so that we have the same picture to look at. I've now connected the uh, old analog signal generator. It has a nice switch to change the output level, I've put it to minus 50 dBm, and I'm going to increase it in steps of 10 dB. This is minus 40 dBm, and you see already the harmonics appearing. Minus 30 dBm, minus 20 dBm. The attenuator starts to come in because it wants to keep the input signal at the uh, mixer at minus 25 dBm. So let's take two more steps. This is minus 10 dBm. Look at the second harmonic and the third harmonic, the third harmonic at minus 45 dBc. And I'm going to take one last step. This is zero dBm. But you see the levels of the harmonics stay at the same level. Uh, and the attenuator still is capable to, to deal with that. Uh, you can imagine that you can go up to 
at least five dBm at the input with the attenuator in automatic because uh, its maximum attenuation is 30 dB. Now also here it's interesting to see what is above the, uh, the 35 megahertz. So we're going to change the range back to 350 megahertz. But again here we have the signal at 130 megahertz, which is a bit weird because why should should two different signal generators have a unwanted output at the same frequency? And the answer is very simple. This 130 megahertz is not coming from either of the two signal generators, but it's coming from a fourth signal generator which is producing a square wave at 130 megahertz, which is not collected, not connected to anything. It's just sitting there on my desk in the open without any shielding. And it's 130 megahertz blast through everything. So it's visible. If you have a spectrum analyzer, it will pick it up and it's there. So whenever you measure the, the performance of generators, you have to make sure that they're well shielded and that that they don't pick up signals from other sources. In this case, the coupling uh, is happening uh, through the coax cables. Uh, the coax cables are not very well, uh, which means that they will pick up all kinds of other uh, signals that are there. I hope this all proves that the uh, Tanya SA is not easily overloaded and that whenever you see a harmonic, as long as your input signal is below 5 dBm and the input attenuator is at automatic, you can trust the level of the harmonics that you see.